All right, so this might go down as one of the most embarrassing uh, ways to have your car broken into, right? So we got a wide body charger scat pack, right? F.A. Green, parked outside overnight. I know a lot of you guys don't like that, but some people live in apartments, uh, uh, townhomes, or houses that don't have garages. Everyone's situation is different. Parked outside overnight, three criminals walk up to his car, and they magically just open the door and get into it. So at first I'm thinking maybe they stole a signal, maybe they got some sort of new technology that just unlocks these cars. The owner left his car unlocked overnight outside in a scat pack at that. And the criminals just took their time. He didn't even realize his car had been broken into until he looked at the footage from the outside cameras. This might go down as one of the most embarrassing ways to have somebody break into your car. I know this guy personally. He's in my city, Charlotte, North Carolina. Let's get into it. What's up guys, it's your boy Knockout360 here with another video, man. So as you can tell, I'm in the house that makes this a house vlog. You already know what's going down. When I come around, let's get into it. I've got car content, car shows, car reviews, car meets, anything and everything car related happens on this channel. So if you're into that, make sure that you stick around. For everyone else, hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so that you know what's coming out and when it's coming out. So I'm always making videos about people's cars being broken into, right? They'll break the window. Um, they'll steal your key fob signal and replicate it in such a way that your car thinks that the key fob that they just created is the original key fob and it'll just open the car and start it and you know unlock it and you can take off and leave it and steal with it or, or steal it you know what i'm saying they'll just take off what are some of the other ways that i've seen it i've seen crazy ways where they'll break the window reach into the uh the neutral uh switch pull that and then they'll put your car in neutral and just push it off. I've seen all kinds of crazy ways that our cars have been broken into and stolen, but never have I seen a owner leave his car unlocked, his scat pack charger, wide body, mind you, unlocked. And the criminals just come and peruse, they peruse through his car, just took their time looking through everything. And he didn't even realize it until he looked at the footage from the ring camera overnight. Let's go ahead and get into it, man. I'm gonna show you the videos. All right, so boom. All right, so this first one here, uh, there is no audio, so don't even worry about that. Well, there is audio, just static. All right, so boom, you see the, you see the scat pack charger parked there, right? This looks like a nice neighborhood. This is Charlotte, North Carolina, by the way. So uh, I, I don't know this area right here specifically, but I just know that this is my city because I know this guy. Shout out to my man, Carlos with the pesos. That's his name. I didn't make that up. Carlos with the pesos. This is his scat pack wide body. I shout him out because he wanted some love. Uh, and mind you, this is the third time that his car has been broken into. The first two times they broke his windows. This time, they didn't even have to do that. He made it easy for him. So, boom. You got these two guys that walked out of this, whatever this is over here. It looks like a BMW. And they're walking up to the scat. One, probably, he's probably going around to see, uh, you know, who's in the uh, house or whatever, not in the house, but just going to look at the mirrors to make sure that the windows or whatever, to make sure that nobody's awake. This guy goes straight for the charger. Now look at what happens here. Tail lights come on, headlights come on. So you're, you're a Dodge owner, you know what that means. Your car has just been opened. It just pops into it. He left it unlocked. Dude just opens the door, sits down, Closes the door, taking his time. The other dude is around the corner checking the house to make sure nobody's awake. He pops the trunk. No alarm, no nothing's going off, right? He's got no car lock, no comfy start, no nothing. Car is wide open. Pops the trunk. He's in there just taking his sweet time, no rushing. All right, so that's the first clip. Let's go to the second one here. And I think this is the second one. Yeah, the boom, this is the second one. His homeboy comes around. They're just talking, taking their time, chilling. No rush at all. Goes to the trunk. He closes the door because he's a polite, you know, he's a polite criminal. You know what I'm saying? He's respectful. They're just in the trunk, just seeing whatever they want, perusing through his car, just taking their time. Look at him. He, he just walking. He walking, looking at the other cars, waving at the neighbors, taking their time. They go back to the car. You would think it's over there, right? Nah, nah, no way. 
They're coming right back. Then the homeboy comes back, gets on the passenger side. The car is wide open. At this point, they just sitting in this man's car, just enjoying his leather at this point. He on the passenger side, he looking through it. I guess he felt that his homeboy didn't uh, look through the car well enough the first time. And I think this is the last clip here. So yeah, homeboy still in the passenger seat. He didn't find nothing. And you keep seeing the house light, the uh, outdoor light, just keep coming on. And apparently, you know, these people are asleep or whatever the case may be. Hop out, close the door respectfully, politely, gingerly, right? And they just walk back. Look at him. He left his tool on top of the car. His homeboy comes her out back and they hop in the car and they're gone. Just like that. I've never seen such a polite such a uh, uh, respectful way to break into somebody's car, break into somebody's scat pack. Because you know, like I know, when our cars get broken into, the window gets broken, uh, front window or side window gets broken, the rear window gets broken, the door handles get snapped, all kinds of crazy stuff. But when you leave your car unlocked, it's easy. Don't leave your car unlocked, guys. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I never thought that I'd have to make this video, man. I got to come down hard on my boy uh, Carlos here because this is his third time having this car broken into. I couldn't even, I don't even think this is what your car being, like, would you consider this a break-in? Like, at this point, all they did was really just open the doors in the trunk. Like, I don't even consider this a break-in. But in theory, this would be the third time his car has been broken into. The first two times, he obviously locked the door. They broke his window. And this time... He didn't even bother to lock the door and they just, you know, took their tongue. But then again, I've heard of people in Atlanta doing stuff like this. Well, they'll roll the windows down. Um, that way, you know, the criminals can just peek their head in. They don't have to break their windows because the owner won't have to pay for it. They'll just peek their head in, see what's in there. If nothing's in there, they'll just mind their business and go on about their day. So maybe this is the safe way, safest way to own a charger. Maybe you just need to leave your doors unlocked at nighttime, Right. And just let the criminals come in, open the door, have a seat, take their time. You know what I'm saying? Have their homeboys come. Homeboys hop in the passenger seats, pop the trunk, look around, peruse around, see what they like, see what they don't like. If there's nothing there, they'll close the trunk respectfully, politely. They'll close the doors respectfully, politely. And then they'll just run off and roll out. And my guy said that he didn't even realize his car had been broken into until he got to work that next morning. And he was looking at his trunk and he all and the shit was all over the place. So apparently he had his stuff like organized in the back in the trunk of his car. And he didn't realize it had been broken into until he opened the trunk and all of his stuff was scattered all over the place, which prompted him to look at the footage from the ring camera. And that's when he realized three people had been in his car just straight chilling. <laughs> you know, um, lock your damn doors, guys. That's the least you can do. Like whenever I hang out with my my Hellcat, my my Charger Scat Pack buddies or whatever the case may be, my Mopar guys, like we have fun with that. Like we hit the lock button numerous times. Like we're Mopar owners. Like as soon as you close your door to walk away from it, you already know the protocol is to hit that lock button four, five, six times and make sure that you hear it. Because if you hit it and you don't hear it, it didn't happen. You got to hit it and hear it. And in my case, I need to be able to hit it hear it and see it all at the same time. I need to see my headlights flash, my taillights flash, and I need to hear it. If I don't see all those things, or if all those things don't happen at once, I'm going to hit it again and keep hitting it until I hear it. You know what I mean? Um, but I mean, this, I guess you could, if you had car lock, what I will say is that the way that car lock is set up to where five minutes after the engine has been turned off, it automatically arms itself. So you can arm it manually, or you can arm it automatically. I have my car set up to where it's automatic. So five minutes after my engine has been turned off and car lock realizes it, it will arm automatically. So for instance, if I forget to arm it manually, it'll do it automatically. In this particular case, with the doors being unlocked, if he had had car lock plugged into the OBD, he would have been able to, it would have armed itself automatically after five minutes because the engine clearly been turned off. And then once that person opened that front door, he would have got a notification that somebody was trying to break into his shit, at which point he could have came outside and done what he needed to do. 
I'm looking at all these clips. I don't see anybody with the gun. I could be wrong. They could have had the shit on Tuck, in which case, you know, I just didn't see it. But um, he still would have got some sort of notification. Not to mention, you know, because if he'd had CompuStar and he didn't lock his car, it wouldn't have armed the security. So they still would have been able to just come in and chill. But at least with car lock, five minutes after the engine's been turned off, it automatically arms itself. So even if the doors are unlocked, car lock is still armed. So once you open the door, vibration notification, front door notification, trunk notification, he would have known something was going on. So for 49 bucks, you can have a, a security that does that type of stuff, man. But at least, guys, listen, I don't even have a problem with him parking outside because I park my Hellcat outside. I go to my parents' house all the time. And I'm there late, 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 late. And I'll park my Hellcat. And you know my Hellcat's bright as hell with the stripe and stuff. I'll park my Hellcat outside and, you know, nobody bothers it. Not to mention everyone's situation is different. Not everybody lives in a home that has a garage. Some people live in townhomes without garages. Some people live in apartments. Some people have houses, but the houses or the house doesn't have a garage, which is completely understandable. So it's not feasible to just say put it in a garage or garage it. That's not always feasible for the for every man, you know. Um... I'm not mad at that at all. I'm just mad that my boy didn't lock the damn car. Like, that's the least you can do. Like, at nighttime, before I go to bed, every night, I lock both of my cars. Now, mind you, I lock my car as soon as I step out of it, every single time, by default. Like, it's automatic in my head at this point. But before I go to bed, I have to walk past my, uh, my keys that's on the wall, you know? And I automatically lock it, even just, uh, just, just for the peace of mind, so that I go to sleep knowing that I did my part, lock it. So that's my message to you guys, lock your damn doors. That's the least you can do. But if you think about it on the flip side, if he had locked his doors, he would probably have a broken window at this point that he'd have to pay for. So maybe it's all a part of the game. Maybe that's what we need to start doing, unlocking our doors, leaving our cars unlocked so that the criminals will just open the door, sit down, peruse around, right? decide whether or not they want to take anything and that's of course on the owner's responsibility not to leave anything in a car so they sit down and they realize oh damn this is a nice car but there's nothing in here i want i'm just going to go ahead and call it a night and get ready for work in the morning <laughs> right and then that's when they close your door respectfully gently they close your trunk respectfully gently and then they go on about their day right and they get ready for work in the morning so maybe he was ahead of the curve. Maybe him doing this was smart because the first two times that his car got broken into, the doors was locked and they broke his window. This time he was smart, left his car unlocked. Nothing was broken. I don't know. Maybe it's, you know, kind of a mind trick there, like that reverse psychology type of stuff. I don't know. But as always, guys, it's been your boy Knockout 360, man. I would advise you to lock your door, but then again, he might be on to something, man. See you guys in the next one. Peace.